In this video, we'll discuss automatic dormers, both floating and structural. We'll place each dormer type, show the tools available to edit them, and then show how we can explode a dormer into its component parts. We'll begin by opening up a completed plan. This home already has a roof on it, as well as a second floor built under the roof, and we're ready to add in some dormers to maximize the living space in the second floor attic. The automatic dormer tools can be found by going to Build, Roof, and then you'll see the two options of Auto Floating Dormer and Auto Dormer. These can also be found by selecting the Roof Parent tool here, at which point we'll see those dormer tools in our tool palette. An Auto Dormer is a structural dormer, which has knee walls to support it. An Auto Floating Dormer is a decorative dormer that bears directly on the roof planes themselves. We're going to begin today by working with the Auto Floating Dormer tool, and we'll take some cross sections of each type so we can really see the difference between these two types. So let's begin by selecting the Auto Floating Dormer. To place the dormer, we just need to click over top of a roof plane. I'm going to place it here. As you can see, I get this informational message. Essentially, what this message is saying is that the dormer does not fit on the roof plane that I'm trying to place it on. The automatic dormer must fit within a single roof plane. The ridge of the dormer cannot exceed the ridge height of the roof plane it is being placed in. If we need to draw a dormer that is taller than the main roof plane, or that stretches across multiple roof planes, we would need to draw that manually, which is covered in another video. So, to resolve this error message, we have three options. First, we could move the dormer lower on the roof plane. In this instance, that doesn't resolve it. Second, we can open the dormer by double-clicking on it, and we can reduce the pitch of the roof or lower the height of the dormer walls. But, in this instance, the issue is that the roof plane that I'm trying to place this dormer in is too shallow. So, I'm going to open these roof planes and adjust the pitch to 12 and 12, which should give us the room needed to fit the dormer within this space. Now, let's take a cross section of this dormer that we've placed. As you can see, the automatic floating dormer is sitting directly on the roof plane. Let's open this dormer and take a look at our options for editing it. On the roof panel, we can change out the style of the dormer. Let's take a look at what each of these styles look like. Hip, gable, shed, mansard, barrel, flared eave, flared hip, and eyebrow. We can change the pitch of the dormer roof, the overhead length, and how we're going to frame the dormer. Under walls, we can select a wall type for the dormer and the height of the dormer. The dormer wall height is measured from the top of the roof plane the dormer is sitting on up to the top plate of the dormer wall. And if you want the dormer ceiling to meet up with the ceiling height of the room, here it's indicated how high your walls would need to be to accomplish this. Now I'm going to delete this dormer and we'll place a structural dormer by using the Auto Dormer tool. While we can place a floating dormer on any roof plane, a structural dormer requires that you have living space in the attic. If you need to learn more about how to accomplish this, we have a video and a knowledge base article that will walk you through creating a one and a half story roof like we have here. When I place the structural dormer, here I get a different informational message than we received before. This one appears because we need a knee wall for this dormer to build properly. So I'll delete this dormer, draw an interior wall parallel to the exterior wall I want to place the dormer near, and then place the dormer again. Let's take another look at our cross section. Now you can see that this dormer type has walls supporting it. I'm going to open up this dormer, which has the same options to edit it as we saw previously. We'll change its height to match the ceiling. As you can see, the window will stretch with the dormer, but we can select the window and resize it as needed. We can also select this dormer and explode it by selecting this option in our edit toolbar. Now the dormer is no longer an automatic dormer, but is instead separated into its component parts, the walls, the roof planes, and the hole in the roof that make up the dormer. Let's place one more structural dormer over here. First, I'll draw my knee wall. 
The dashed line we see here is where the flat ceiling begins within the room, so I'll draw the knee wall right over top of this. And then I'll place the dormer. This time, I'll open it up and specify it as a shed dormer. I'll set my walls to the existing ceiling. I'll need a much lower pitch for this roof type. And then use the edit handles of the dormer to adjust its width. Now I'm going to select the dormer and use my center object tool, found in the edit toolbar here, to center the dormer in the room. Finally, I'd like to have six evenly spaced windows on this dormer, so I'll start by selecting this window and reducing its size to three feet wide. Then I'll use my multiple copy tool in the edit toolbar to copy this window five times across the dormer, each one 39 inches from the previous one. Then I'll use my center object tool one last time. I'll select all of these windows by holding down my control key and selecting each one, then selecting center object here, then clicking to center them on the dormer. As you can see, the automatic dormer tools can be used to create a wide variety of dormer styles to fit your space.